Hey folks out in saxophone land, uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, this Seagal Kirk Whalum II mouthpiece. I uh, recently purchased this and I thought I would take a moment to explain why I, I bought it and what I like about it. First of all, uh, I've had a couple conversations with Mike Brecker about uh, finding a mouthpiece that has a high ceiling, which basically means you can blow what you want to blow through it and it, it'll just take your air and never shut down. And one of the ways I figured that out with this mouthpiece was to do the overtone exercise where you overblow a low B flat to an F. And uh, I was doing this for a student the other day and I blew as physically hard as I could play and this, the mouthpiece just got bigger and louder and juicier and it just stayed right there. So let me give you an example of what that is, and that sounds like this. Now as you can hear, I'm pushing as much air as I can and the pitch stays centered, doesn't go flat, the horn doesn't crack, and sounds fantastic. Now why is that important? I play a lot of funk and R&B and you know, if you're standing in front of a bass player that's really kicking hard or the guitar player, these days it's not uncommon to see a keyboardist bringing their own PA to run their rig through. And if you're trying to get heard in the middle of all of that, you really need to have something that's going to cut and project and give you uh, a sound that you can hear on stage. Uh, and I think one thing we forget when we're playing the saxophone is that it really is a 19th century uh, instrument that's competing with 21st century electronics so you got to have every advantage you can get especially on stage. Uh, one of the things that has always struck me great about a Sugal mouthpiece is that it has a big fat juicy tone no matter where you go on, on the horn. So some of the tricks that I like to do the false fingering stuff especially in funk I really want the horn to open up and, and keep up with the electronics, so that, first of all, so that I can hear myself, and secondly, so that other people can hear me. Even in, you know, even though I have a PA, you still want that your sound to be able to fill up the room, no matter what, because sometimes the PA is not so great. So if I just open my throat up and do some false fingering things for you like this. <laughs> just opens up and gives me power and the edge I need to compete in that environment. Uh, the other thing, of course, is we're not always in that environment. and Maybe you need to have something a little sweeter, a little subtone action. And uh, I don't know how Gary figured out how to do this, but I can do a subtone on here. <laughs> You know, if I'm having to blow some 30s and 40s jazz, uh, boy, that's pretty fat and juicy, man. Uh, and that's with a very sizable baffle on the inside. So uh, if, if this is something that you need and you're doing what I do, funk, R&B, and then uh, tomorrow you're going to play a jazz gig with a trio or a quartet and you need that fat, juicy, low stuff, um, this is the way to go. So uh, invest some money. Get yourself a good uh, KW2 or the SG2. Fantastic mouthpieces. Thank you.